Previously, we've looked at how to work with a dictionary object in Python. Now we want to go a little bit further in detail about how do we work with these dictionary objects and some of the built-in methods that can help us use them besides just getting an individual key or value, looping through them, etc. So the first thing we want to look at is how do we go in and delete out an entire dictionary? And we saw the delete key and we can loop through it so we can individually loop through an entire dictionary and delete each key as it comes up, but that would be a bit tiresome after a while. Wouldn't it be nicer to delete out a whole dictionary at once? Well, that's what the clear method does. It's attached to your dictionary object, so all you have to do is call your dictionary object.clear, and your whole dictionary is now empty. Notice we've got an existing phone book that we've seen in previous examples, and we've got a function that will allow us to print out these elements one at a time for us. Now let's go through and see how we're going to print out the phone book, then call clear, and then see what happens afterwards. We run our script. Notice we see printing your phone book, and we see a whole list of elements. Then we see printing your phone book again, and this is the second time it's called after we called clear, and notice that there are no elements to print out. That's because the entire dictionary is now empty, waiting for new content to be added to it. So this does not delete and eliminate our phone book. This just makes it so there's no content within it, and we can then go in and add new elements as we need to. And looking at phone book previously, we looked at how we get a value based upon the key. However, if we don't have a key, we saw that it throws a key value error, and we have to be able to then catch that. Well, sometimes we want to do something different to make it easier so our program doesn't stop running. Let's say that these particular phone book elements was a company directory. And if a name wasn't in the directory, we just wanted to route them to the receptionist desk. So here's how we use the get method. We call the dictionary object and say dot get, and then we give it the key we're looking for. Then it has a second parameter. And the second parameter tells us what to return if the key is not found. This is like having a try accept block built in, except we'll never see the exception thrown. Instead, we'll get that default value, which just makes it that much nicer and easier to work with. Notice in our first example, we call James, and James can be found inside of our phone book. Our second print is for Jennifer, and Jennifer is not in our phone book, and so we use its default value. And just as a different example, we also call Jesse, and Jesse, instead of putting a default value in, we now have user not found. So maybe we don't want to send them to a default phone number. We want to do something different. That's totally acceptable too. This is a perfect example of this. Now, here's another example that we find from time to time. And it kind of depends upon how you're doing it, but we have a method called pop. And what pop is going to do is we pass it a key that we're looking for. It's going to return the value for us, and it's going to delete the key at the same time. So that way, the key that we just asked for is no longer going to exist inside of our dictionary object. So we're going to, in this case, we're going to print out our dictionary object. And then we're going to pop out a value, be able to print that value that's returned based upon that key. And then we're going to print the object again to see that it's now missing. So now we're going to run this real quick. Notice we have all of our information. We have four elements inside of our dictionary object. Then we pop the element whose key is Mary. We get that value, we can print that out, but when we print out our phone book, notice we only have three elements and Mary is now missing. So this is just a quick way we need to get a value and then we don't need to use it anymore. This becomes a really easy way to handle something like that. We've already looked at pop, but now we want to look at pop item. And pop item is a little bit different than pop. The first thing you might notice is the fact that pop item does not take a key. 
And what that means is it's going to return a random value for us. Because we don't have that key, we need to know what key that value is coming from. And therefore, we get a key and value being returned. And you can see that in our source code here. I have a key variable and a value variable that are accepting the values being returned by this method. I'm going to print key and value, and then I'm printing the entire phone book on each side just so we can see what happens to the entire phone book. Notice that it prints all four elements. It then randomly selects Martha, and I see Martha and her phone number. And then notice that it is not there the second time we print on our phone book. So pop item is removing the element just like pop does, but it's a random selection. In our last example, I have the regular phone book as we've set up, but now we're going to use the method keys and values. Keys are going to give me a list of all of my keys inside my dictionary without a corresponding value. Values is going to give me a list of all the values in my dictionary without their corresponding key. When we print this out, notice that we get the dictionary keys and it's listed as such and then with values we get dict values these do not affect our dictionary at all as you can see but it does give us a chance to kind of work with them and if we need to convert our keys and values like into a list we have an ability to probably handle something like that but this just gives us a quick way that we can return those if you need to and that's just some more ways that you can work with your dictionary object in Python.